And now, CBS 21 Sports First Score Friday, brought to you by Subway, starts right now. Welcome to week number eight, a great week for upsets. This is First Score Friday, where you get the entire story in high school football first. I'm Jason Bristol. Well, after this, we have two more weeks left in the regular season. That's it. So tonight is crucial for teams trying to make the playoffs. But we start with two clubs that are definitely in. Trinity hoping to take down Palmyra. There's Maggie McLaughlin, the homecoming queen. Whoa, whoops. Uh, Palmyra had issues as well. In the third, down 26 nothing. Here's Preston Bear finally running hard. 47 yards down to the five yard line. Cougars later scored, but Bear was held to 61 yards. Trinity clicking. Patrick Dill, Chris Lentz, what a great catch for the touchdown. It was 32 to 7. And then Dill buying time here to Lentz again. How about this final? 46 to 14. Trinity dropping Palmyra from the unbeaten ranks. This is a huge win for the Shamrocks. They practiced real well this week, so we didn't have to raise our voice. We didn't have to say anything. They were they were ready to play tonight, so it was a great effort. Yeah, we had a hard start. We really did. You know, we made some mistakes, and it put us in the hole early. But I, I'm proud. I mean, you know, our players our players played hard. We kept on fighting, and uh, you know, Trinity they're a good team. With a great defense, holding Preston Bear to zero yards in the first half. He finished with 61. He came in averaging over 220 a game. After seeing that, homecoming means a lot more for East Penn. The Panthers playing Milton Hershey. First half, all East Penn. Kevin Stago. Yeah, it was the Stago show. Five-yard score here. His third of the game, 19-0 in the fourth. A.J. Wilson up in the air. This ball really up in the air. Parth Patel comes down with it, 28 yards. East Pennsboro with a huge win over Milton Hershey. 33 to seven, Stago 113 yards on the ground. So the mid Penn capital just got a little more interesting. Paul Myra, Trinity, East Pennsboro all have one loss now. Milton Hershey drops to four and two. And that was a big win for East Penn because heading into week eight, the Panthers were on the outside looking in in the AAA playoff chase. The top 16 teams make it. Northeastern was 15, according to the power rankings. We'll see them later. While Solanco held that last playoff spot, East Penn was 18 and Northern York was 17. That's another team that needed a win. So the Polar Bears, though, facing one of the best in the mid pen, Greencastle Antrim. The Blue Devils lead the Colonial Division at 4-0 beat Northern last year by 43 points. So what about tonight? CBS 21 News' Chris Fisher checks in with the York County Mobile Newsroom. Jason, Northern New York came into this matchup for first place. Already a man down, missing featured running back Elijah Locke. And then their special teams decided not to show up. After the Blue Devils took a 7-0 lead, they recovered the kickoff on the Northern New York 9-yard line just three plays later. Denton Cordell scoring for the second time in the first three minutes of the contest. 14-0 Greencastle Antrim. Still in the first, Polar Bears able to force GA to punt, but another special teams gap. Blue Devils recovering, leading to another touchdown. Second quarter now, Greencastle Antrim led 28-0. Just before the half, they get tricky with it. Denver Cordell, halfback pass to Gabrielle Friedgen, and he does the rest. Blue Devils melt Northern 42-7. Coming in, we needed to step up, and I thought everyone did. Our line attacked them well. I don't think they had many rushing yards. This next game against Shippensburg is a big game. I mean, we know that they're 6-1, and one. Northern beat them, but they might have had an off game. We're going to have a hard practice, and we're going to come ready to play. Now Greencastle Antrim is in control of their own destiny. A win next week against Shippensburg, and they lock up the Colonial Division. Reporting with the York County Mobile Newsroom for First Score Friday, Chris Fisher, CBS. CBS 21 News. Thanks, Chris. Now that Shippensburg team again was upset last week by the same Northern club we just saw. That was Shippensburg's first loss of the season. The Greyhounds taking on Waynesboro, which is fighting for a playoff spot. Second quarter, ship up 7-0 play action. Marshall Whitmer, Zach McMullen, what a grab. 18 yards, it's now a 14-point lead. Waynesboro, though, does not quit on the kickoff. A little slip there. Trey Andre going up the gut. The Greyhounds will not catch him. 94 yards to the house. 
The Indians are on the board, but that excitement died real quick. William Burt, the give, and he's going places. 70 yards, Shippensburg rebounds, winning 49 to 20. Now four and one in the Colonial in second place behind Greencastle Antrim. Well, if you want another huge upset, we have one in the York Adams League. And we also get to know a quarterback from York County. Here from an Eagle who has his team soaring to new heights. Coming up next on Helmets Off on CBS 21 News. And now, CBS 21 Sports First Score Friday, brought to you by Subway, starts right now. So which teams are still doing damage in districts? We're about to find out. Welcome to First Score Friday, where you get the entire story in high school football first. I'm Jason Bristol. Well, at this point in the playoffs, we have favorites, we have underdogs, and we have everything in between. Start in Quad A, the big boys. The number three seed is Central Dolphin hosting Cedar Cliff. Start in the second. This game tied at seven. The Colts making some noise. Andrew Ford on the quarterback. Keeper, 14-yard touchdown. It was 13-7. Cedar Cliff, though, issues with PATs. Missing this one. Missed three tonight. It could have been 14-7. CD, though, takes the lead. Zade Esau in the fourth, up 21-19. Zade doing things. 37 yards. It's now 28 19 Rams. 2.30 to go in the game. Esau again. You thought that was a big gainer? Look at this one. 72 yards for Zade Esau. It's 35 25. Look at this final score though. 35 32. Those three missed PATs were huge in this win. And Glenn McNamee knows it. Well, I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, very proud of our kids, the way they responded tonight against a very good football team, uh, especially when they were down. And uh, it shows, you know, how together our group of kids is, and uh, it's a real credit to them, and, and I'm proud of them. So what a win! Now Central Dolphin moves on to the Final Four in Quad A. And that's where the Rams will meet Central York. The Panthers beat Governor Mifflin 27-21. That game is a week from tonight. Well, last week, this show was almost called First Score Saturday. Both Palmyra and Redland needed three overtimes each to win their games. And now, well, now these two are hooking up in the AAA bracket. Do they have anything left? CBS 21's Chris Fisher was with the Cumberland County Mobile Newsroom, and he has the answer. Well, Jason Preston Bear has been Paul Myers' workhorse all season long, and that didn't change tonight in this quarterfinal matchup against Redland. But if you can believe, after he rushed over 300 yards and found the end zone on multiple occasions, sensational sophomore for the Patriots, John Ford, had a better game. From the first quarter, Ford's engine was in high gear, breaking tackles and taking this one 45 yards all the way to the house. Ford would put in the first three scores for Redland. They were up 21-7. And in the second quarter, it was Preston Bears' turn for a big payoff. Taking this one 39 yards to the end zone. Bear 338 yards rushing and three touchdowns in the contest. A huge game. 21-14, Palmyra within a score, but back comes Ford. Cougars think they have him stuffed, but he shifts gears and goes the distance. Ford finishing with six touchdowns, 254 yards, and a 56-28 Redland cover of Palmyra. Uh, it's very exciting because last year, I said last week, we two and eight to this year's semifinals is crazy. These kids have been asking to make it this far for a long time and, and this senior class really deserves it. They've busted their butts. Well, the Redland victory might be a little bittersweet. Offensive lineman in West Virginia verbal commit, Brett Niederreiter sustaining an injury in the first half and it's not sure whether he'll play next week. Reporting from West Shore Stadium for First Score Friday, Chris Fisher, CBS 21 News. Oh, that is bad news. We had Brett last week on Helmets Off. What a game for the running backs in this one. As for Preston Bear, the year for him, he ends up now with over 2,000 yards rushing for the season. But again, Paul Myra is done. The top team in AAA, Bishop McDevitt. Crusaders actually losing to Conrad Weiser, but here's McDevitt. Nate Showalter from Alec Werner, and this one is down at the 13. The next play is Andre Robinson, and Robinson goes in. It's now a 7-7 game. Later in the first, Robinson 
making this his neighborhood. In from the two. After that, huh, look at this score. Bishop McDevitt, 70 to 21 over Conrad Weiser. McDevitt will play Redland in the next round. Down in Class A, there's only four teams in the playoffs, and that means those four schools had last Friday off. I mean, an extra week of rest is always good. Camp Hill is the top seed. The Lions and their fans looking at your Catholic in the third quarter. It's Jake Bingham taking the handoff, and he goes in from 22 yards out. He is in. It's 14-0 Camp Hill. Fourth quarter, Marcellus Hayes dropping back, locking on Mario Ponce. He has it, 53 yards, it's 21 zip. And then Bingham in the fourth, the direct snap. Some insurance here. He had 246 yards rushing. Camp Hill winning 27 to nothing. Camp Hill again is the number one seed. The Lions will now play for a district championship in Frank Gay's first season there. Lions will meet Columbia, which had no trouble with Millersburg winning 42 zip. This game you see on your screen is Friday at Hershey Park Stadium. District 3 also has some powerhouses in AA. Will those teams get tested or even lose perhaps in the semifinals? Plus, we have helmets off with a star from Bermudian Springs. Go under that helmet with an eagle who's getting it done on the ground. Helmets off is coming up next on First Score Friday. <laughs> I'm Tyler Fitzke, running back and linebacker for Bermudian Spring. My favorite Subway sub is spicy Italian on Italian herbs and cheese. If I were Harry Potter, I'd play Quidditch all the time. <laughs> if I had a race horse, I would name it Coach Defoe. If I could trade places with one NFL player, Brett Favre, because he's retired now, supposedly. <laughs> my name's Tyler Fitzke, and my helmet is off. <laughs> okay, Favre's done, but I guarantee you this, Tyler wants to keep playing. And for the Eagles to advance tonight, they need to run the football because that's what they do best. Here's what I mean. Bermudian Springs, third best rushing attack in the entire state, according to Max Preps. Only Meadville and General McLean are better. The Eagles relying on both Tyler and Adam Berryman, and they are undefeated. And there is Tyler Fitzke getting ready for Wyoming, missing, but the Eagles had nothing early. Down 21, nothing. Grayson Helm, Gerald Burns, and the Spartans are now up 27, nothing. More from Wyoming, missing. Jordan Schwanbach with a stiff arm, and he hits pay dirt. It's now 33, nothing. Bermudian Springs, 114 yards rushing total for this game. There is Adam Berryman scoring, but the season is over. Eagles fall 34 to 7 to Wyoming. So will this one be any closer? Lancaster Catholic facing Trinity in double A. And here's a short answer. No. 39 to 7 Lancaster Catholic at the half and then forcing a turnover here. Brandon Hollister has the fumble recovery. And then Hollister, you see him on defense. Here he is on offense, 33 yards. Look at this final. You thought McDevitt was a big one. Lancaster Catholic winning 60 to seven, improving to 12 and 0. So Wyoming and Lancaster Catholic will meet in the AA championship game next Friday at Hershey Park Stadium. Up in Quad A, Central Dolphin was in survival mode for a while. We saw that. But what about Cumberland Valley? Will the Eagles push all the right buttons against Southwestern? Cumberland Valley glad to be at home at Harry Chapman Field. The Eagles up 14-0. Jeremy DiPietro, right side, right place, right time. 21-0. And then the Mustangs, though. How about this pass play? Mike Felton, the captain, somehow catches it for the touchdown. It was 21-7. The Eagles, though, with some insurance, even after that great play by Felton, Alex Kusha with the touchdown catch. And Cumberland Valley wins easily, 42-21. The Eagles now have a semifinal date with Wilson, which beat Daniel Boone. So two teams with a ton of tradition playing next week. We are not finished with AAA. We still have the number two seed and the number three seed to go. And Colby Grant of Susquehanna Township was great last week. Is he good enough tonight to pull off another upset and perhaps win the Subway Phenom as well? 
Lamp Peter Strasburg, the number two seed in AAA, has to beat Shippensburg to move on. No score in the first. LS has Nate Shank going the other way with it. Matt McCruden, he's in from nine yards out. It was 7-0 Pioneers. Second quarter, Shank dropping back, feels the heat. Jordan Groff, Groff has it, takes a blow, and he's still in. It's 14-0 LS. Very next drive, Lampeter Strasburg again. McCruden from three yards out this time, 21-0. You get the idea. Your final, 35-0 as LS improves to 11-1. Now, Lampeter Strasburg's next opponent will come from the West York and Susquehanna Township game. Both those schools barely won last week, but they're still going. And at this point, that's all that matters. West York, the third seed in AAA, playing at home. Bulldogs down 7-0 in the first. Caden Hepler goes to work. The quick toss. Actually, Zachary Smith doing most of the work. 49 yards down the sidelines. We're now tied at 7. Later in the first, the Bulldogs in the red zone. Brock Snellbaker changing direction, and he's in. West York's in front, 14-7. The lead was 21-7, but the Indians responding here. Brandon Wallace takes a blow, takes a hit, and then jumps in for the touchdown. But that was it for Susquehanna Township. West York is a winner, 42-14, advancing to the next round. The Bulldogs forced five turnovers and even blocked a punt for a touchdown. Time to announce the Subway Phenom. It's the player you picked as the best one we caught on tape. And our winner is a kicker. It's well-deserved, too. Taylor Carey from Shippensburg drilled a field goal to give the Greyhounds their first district win in school history. He had 95% of the vote on CBS21.com. Unfortunately, Shippensburg's season is over after tonight. We have another winner as well for signing up on CBS21.com and voting. Maynard Gandy of Duncannon wins a $30 gift card from Subway. Hey, how about some soccer, high school soccer? Lancaster Mennonite, Tulpahawken for the state championship in AA. Caleb Cole and Mennonite down 1-0. Not anymore. It's 1-1. What a goal by Cole. Second half now. 21 minutes remaining. Cole attacking. He will go five hole. And the Blazers win their first state championship. 2 to 1. Want to thank Subway and everyone behind the scenes for everything they do. This is our last full first score Friday, but we'll see you next week on CBS 21 News. Have a great weekend.